Welcome back to my shop. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the previous video, uh, yesterday I was conducting a test of uh, the pitot tube that I have built for uh, my friend Mike. Uh, the pitot tube has a heating element inside and I was trying to find out how hot this uh, pitot tube really got. Unfortunately, uh, yesterday I was not able to use uh, my digital thermometer and I had to go with my backup, which is a regular little tiny thermometer. It's worked out quite well. The only problem with it is uh, it doesn't go past 220 degrees. And uh, if you go back and look yesterday's video, you will see that uh, the heating element uh, really gets uh, hot in a hurry. And it got to 220 degrees pretty quickly, at which point we had to stop the experiment yeah, since I couldn't even read uh, how hot it would get. So I was still bummed out about it, uh, not being able to test it appropriately. And uh, I started playing around with the di digital thermometer again, and I found out that some of the problems might have been an operator error. error. Um, so I'll go, I'll turn uh, the camera around now and uh, show you the new experiment that I'll be conducting today to test uh, how hot the uh, heating element uh, really gets. I cannot test the pitot probe anymore because I shipped that yesterday afternoon to Mike. So we're going to conduct the test on the actual heating heating element, which is probably even more representative of uh, what's going on inside the, the, the pitot tube anyway. Well, that's the uh, little one that I was using. Let me see if I can focus it. That's over here. Uh, this is a little thermometer that I was using yesterday, as you can see, only goes up to 220 degrees, which is a bit of a problem because this heating element seems to be going up uh, much hotter than that. There's the heating element right there. Let's see if I can focus that too. All right, this is the, uh, the other Arbor Freight thermometer, infrared thermometer that I was uh, uh, trying to use yesterday. And uh, when you use it, it actually shoots out a little laser beam to help you aim uh, uh, the uh, the probe uh, to where you know you're trying to measure. The only thing to remember about that is that the measurements are not done with the laser, but with an infrared beam that is actually emitted below the laser uh, diode. And if I turn it around, and if I can uh, focus it a little bit, you can see that there's two holes to this uh, uh, probe. One is the top one is where the uh, laser comes out and the bottom one is the infrared receiver. That's what's actually doing the measuring of the temperature. So let me show you. The, that's where the laser comes out of. But the temperature is picked up on this probe actually. So what happened, what was happening, I was having a parallax error while the while the uh, laser was pointing, say, to the screw, I was actually measuring the area right down here. And, you know, when you're very far away, that doesn't make a, a big difference, but when you're that close trying to measure something, it does make a, quite a huge difference. As a matter of fact, I would kept measuring the temperature of the table instead of the temperature of the pitot tube. So uh, what I decided to do today is just to perhaps just kind of still get close to it but um, kind of aim the laser farther down and just kind of uh, align the actual infrared element to the uh, heating element here the way I can get uh, the measurement of the temperature. Obviously the pitot heat is gone and uh, I mean the pitot tube is gone so we're going to run the experiment on the bare on the bare element heating element here and uh, it's the same. Uh, it's the same setup that uh, I had yesterday. Jumper cables that are going to be connected to the battery of uh, of my vehicle. And uh, what I'll do, I'll get a piece of metal here to support uh, the heating element, and also to give it a chance to cool down should it get too hot. So this is like a big old ugly piece of metal, but there's a little slot there that I can shove the heating element into at least let's see 
like that to support it and should things get a little bit out of hand I can just shove it all in there and it kind of helps it cool down more quickly and also hey if that thing wants to blow up <laughs> that's the best place to do it so anyways let's support it like that for now we're gonna hook up the batteries and uh, see how far it is uh, temperature uh, I mean this heating probe uh, uh, gets uh, as far as temperature wise so it is connected right now we're gonna start measuring and see if I can aim for it there you go you sorry here's a picture you see it's going when I line it up you can see how quickly it goes up and uh, if I if I get the laser beam on it you can see it goes down to 70 degrees that's just the table that I'm measuring and if I get the infrared to aim at it you can see sorry you can see the temperature going up quite quickly it's kind of hard to keep it right on it but uh, you get the idea let me see if I can concentrate Oops. So I can start smelling actually the the air getting hot. Feel like there's something cooking around here. Let's see, get back. Let me get it back on it. There it goes. Let's see. There you go. It's kind of really hard to hold your hand steady, look at what you're doing, and look into the camera as well, but. Get it as hot as it can go. Oops. So you can, as you can see, it's uh, it's already approaching 500 degrees. I'm getting a little closer. Maybe I won't wobble as much. I think that's way beyond the design specification of the fiberglass and epoxy of the nose. So that's definitely beyond what the, what the G10 uh, can, uh, can withstand. Just let it go a little, a little more so here. Uh, I'm kind of losing track of it. There we go. Oops. Well, we overheated. OH for overheat, I suppose. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, about five, six, or six hundred degrees. Let me disconnect uh, everything here. All right, we're back. Back to the probe. We're gonna try to let it cool down in there. Wow. As you can tell, the heating uh, element gets really, really hot, really, really fast. Um, the only good news is that it also gets really, really cold, really, really fast. So it could uh, considerably be used uh, with a temporary on type of switch. But uh, still, I'm not really happy about uh, how hot the whole system uh, is getting. Uh, the temperatures I was looking for were probably more in the 200 to 300 degree range certainly not in the 6 to 700 degree range uh, so, so we're gonna have to do something about that and probably uh, to step down the the voltage to uh, to the uh, pitot heat uh, probe uh, or um, some some other some other device uh, uh, that we're gonna have to come up with but definitely there's more scientific research, I want to call it that, uh, to be done on uh, on controlling the uh, the heat from the pitot tube. Obviously uh, with uh, with my my idea was to keep the heating element outside of the nose cone but uh, uh, certainly uh, 
that type of temperature might propagate to the nose and maybe possibly even do some damage. So um, and next we're going to try to figure out exactly how to control this temperature which is going to be the key to be able to operate this device safely.